Chương trình đào tạo do Đại học Khoa học ứng dụng BBRAC cung cấp, kéo dài sau học kỳ với nhiều kiến thức chuyên sâu về xây dựng công. Được thành lập vào năm 1964, trọng tâm đào tạo và nghiên cứu của BBRAC là các lĩnh vực xây dựng, năng lượng, công nghệ sinh học và quản trị kinh doanh. Nhiều chương trình đào tạo của trường được phát triển mạnh thông qua các dự án chuyển giao và nghiên cứu hiện đại. BBRAC định hướng trở thành trường đại học cho mọi công dân, đáp ứng tăng cường nguồn nhân lực bền vững cho xã hội. Ngoài ra, trường còn mang đến cho người học nền tảng kiến thức thực tiễn về kỹ thuật xây dựng, có sự gắn kết giữa thực hành và nghiên cứu, hợp tác chặt chẽ với các viện nghiên cứu liên ngành nhằm tăng cường cơ hội học tập, nghiên cứu, việc làm cho sinh viên. Các môn học chính của trường gồm có thống kê trong xây dựng, kết cấu bê tông cốt thép, kết cấu gỗ, địa chất công trình, tổ chức thi công, quản lý nước đô thị và luật xây dựng, vân vân. Yeah, dear student and distinguished parents, welcome to visual bachelor live stream today. We would like to organize the live stream bachelor of uh, civil engineering program and partner university to give potential students with important information about the PC program. Moreover, audience will uh, receive essential understanding of how and why the construction industry is promised to become a rewarding sector through this episode. Uh, if student and parent have any question, please uh, put a question for us via the chat on this live stream. And it is a pleasure for us today to introduce our distinguished guest today. A warmest welcome to special guest from Germany, Professor Dr. Alexander Glock, Academic Director of Civil Engineering Program from Partner University, Piperac University of Applied Sciences. Yeah, welcome Professor Dr. Alexander Glock. Ms. Fabiola Schmidt, Academic Coordinator of Civil Engineering Program from Partner University, Piperac University of Applied Sciences. And a warmest welcome to Dr. Nguyễn Tấn Tiên, Academic Coordinator of Bachelor of Civil Engineering Program, Vietnamese and German University today. And thank you for all the guests for being with us today. So we invite you to enjoy a video about our Partner University Pro before joining us for today's live stream. Please. Yeah, okay. Uh, so let's start our live stream with a topic about a recent development in the Vietnamese construction industry today. Uh, as you know that Vietnam has experienced the fourth wave of the COVID-19 pandemic. Could you please share to potential students the challenge and opportunities uh, that the construction industry will face in the next few years. So Dr. Nguyễn Tân Tiên, would you please provide some information about the Vietnamese construction industry recently and what methods Vietnam construction company can survive the pandemic effect of this industry? Yeah, please, uh, Dr. Nguyễn Tân Tiên. Yeah, thank you for your question. Um, good evening, everyone. And today I would like to say the, the, the big picture of the Vietnamese uh, current industries in the field of construction engineering. You know, um, the construction industry in Vietnam is including the design, news, and renovation in uh, construction, and uh, the manufacturer uh, and supplies of building material uh, and equipment um, is one of the biggest uh, industry in Vietnam. And um, historically, account more than forty percent of the national products, and employs uh, many millions workers. Um, as you know, you know, and the, the annual uh, Vietnamese uh, project has exceeded more than a hundred million U.S. dollars in recent years. So. Uh, the, the construction industry is an exciting dynamic uh, industry um, and it contributes to the GDP of the national growth and also is, is appealing to uh, career opportunities. Uh, however, you know, uh, the seasonal and the sporadic nature of the construction uh, works um, which often provide the, 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 the interrupt between the, the, uh, the fields. And then um, uh, 
the construction and, and competitive business may suggest to uh, um, bankruptcies. But in general, we say that uh, the uh, civil engineering job can bring ben many benefits and opportunities for those who pursue uh, the, in the field of construction uh, field. Mm. And you may know that the, the, the construction uh, is widely uh, recognized as a discipline that, that is a combination of uh, art and science. And art, for example, is either the building of the building, and uh, the design is, is either one that have the, for example, the building straight up right or uh, maintain itself, uh, prevent us from the earthquake loading or from the wind, for example, you know. So the understanding of the structure. So um, uh, I mean the technical aspect is extremely important to us. It is also essential to the, the professional uh, construction uh, expertise, how knowledge of the business and management as well. So um, we are uh, always, we are always encourage uh, those who are studying the field of construction um, to take very opportunity to uh, participate and observe in the actual uh, projects. Um, so an understanding of the process uh, bring very benefits for uh, uh, though uh, who are working now on the field of the construction. So um, another part uh, of the uh, uh, topic will be given by Vietnamese University lecturer, by from the book, from the theories, and will provide the foundation for the future career part. And um, you know, while the construction had uh, traditionally been very conservative, right? The, 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 the increasing rates of the technical developments uh, and the growing of the international uh, competition uh, are serving to accelerate the new development in the matter in the tennis and building material as well. So for the uh, coming uh, new years, I think that we will see in the bit, the very uh, bit, the increased rates of uh, 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 the, the in, or the another in investment to the fields of the construction. So to uh, uh, have a successful project, I mean the construction project, is depend on manufacturing. And I think to, to, to do so, you have many characteristics and you have to do um, uh, all the effort. For example, um, uh, there's many uh, factors we would consider. Um, for instance, like, uh, you have to be uh, uh, preparing the good work plan you have to be uh, efficiency learning and training the, the worker and the managers as well. Um, you have to uh, minimize the cost, the rewards by uh, using like um, and the timely quality control or efficient scheduling the labor, the building materials and the equipment. Um, Last but not least, I think we, uh, we have to be revenging action at the site construction um, by applying the, 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 the good safety procedure. Um, let me talk something a little bit about trend in Vietnamese now today. So the, uh, some major trends noted in the field of construction in Vietnam nowadays uh, include uh, the, the increasing of international competition, the rapid change in uh, technologies, and um, the, the wide availability of information uh, through the internet you may help, and uh, the increasing speed and ease of uh, communication, uh, the increase of governmental uh, regulation in the, in the construction industry, particularly um, in the areas of um, safety and uh, environmental protection. Uh, you know, uh, many uh, companies, larger, well-managed companies, uh, have to create and, and adapt to the behavior of the total uh, construction market. And among them, you see, uh, one of the biggest trends in the construction nowadays about the, the increasing use of computer for both uh, design and management. Um, that requires more 
and more uh, the engineer, the highly skilled engineer, uh, to the uh, construction industry. And the last thing I want to mention is about the automation of the construction equipment. That's why uh, we require more uh, highly skilled uh, equipment operator and technical. So hoping the information can bring you can it made the uh, the picture of Vietnamese construction and uh, also the construction all over the world. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for your sharing, uh, Dr. Nguyen Tan Tin. Are you uh, hear about the sharing from Dr. Nguyen Tan Tin? The construction industry in Vietnam have a lot of opportunities. However, we will find a lot of challenges, and the biggest challenge is the workforce, a uh, very high skilled labor workforce of the construction industry is still lacking. Now we come from uh, uh, Professor Glock uh, and uh, Ms. Fabiola Schmidt. Uh, dear Professor Glock and Ms. Uh, Fabiola Schmidt, uh, as an expert in the construction industry field, could you please share your thoughts about the challenges and the opportunities of Vietnam construction industry? Yes, please. Yes, thank you, Mr. Tu. Um, thank you, Jen, and the possibility, opportunity to um, welcome also from the German end, um, the participants, students, and the parents first, before I come back to your um, question, Mr. Tu. Um, we are doing the majority of this um, talk in English language, but of course, you're very welcome to also ask your questions in Vietnamese language. Jen, Dr. Chen will then answer them rather than myself or Fabiola Schmidt. And we will have time for your questions. Let me come back to the question regarding construction industry. The construction industry at the moment is um, in big changes globally, see, not only in Vietnam, um, we have challenges um, to tackle with and we have certain global trends um, which we have to deal with. Um, the major global trend, of course, is the global warming and the construction industry with its very large carbon footprint. Um, we are working with cement, with concrete, with steels, heavy machinery, um, we have the um, task to reduce our carbon footprint in all areas from design, from construction, and um, develop new materials, work in a more sustainable um, urban development area. The second mega trend, as we would call it, is the digitalization. Um, our industry had um, is behind um, other industry like the telecommunication industry or we're now using um, internet um, but now um, the digitalization has made its way into the construction industry um, into um, the design where um, multidisciplinary um, engineering teams work together in um, digital models incorporate cost and time estimates in there. This requires new types of contract, collaboration contracts. Um, we are talking about building information modeling or some call it 5D, three dimensions of the building, fourth dimension, the time, fifth dimension, the costs. So that's where we're heading to. The construction equipment itself has made huge progress over the last years, more into automation. We are printing houses. We are working with new materials um, to get into this more sustainable development. Looking from these global trends into Vietnam, looking from Germany into Vietnam, I see a large opportunity for Vietnam as a um, fastly developing country to um, learn from the mistakes that um, we might have made in the past centuries back in Europe um, and um, learn out of our mistakes and skip these mistakes, take on the new um, <clears throat> challenges. And um, these are what I see um, in, in principle, usage of new construction materials. 
that's where the development is on the material science side. Mobility concepts, mobility concepts have to be um, thought in a different way. The car is not the only mobility concept and for mega cities, it's definitely not a sustainable um, mobility concept. And then how does urban development um, be carried out? What about water, water treatment, water usage, electricity, power consumption? These are the um, main challenges and um, VGU and HBC, Hochschule Biberach, University of Applied Science Biberach, we've made it to our mission to educate the future civil engineers in that way to build the new future um, that society needs. Thank you for your question, Mr. Tu. Yeah, uh, thank you for uh, your uh, sharing, your value of sharing and the insights of the work class uh, construction uh, engineering. Uh, so do we have any contribution uh, to this uh, question from Ms. Uh, Fabiola Smith, please? Um, needed and totally topic. We have questions. Yes. Uh, we are a little uh, difficult to hear you, um, Ms. Uh, Fabiola Smith. We, we will answer the questions together, Fabiola Schmidt and I. Um, yeah. We are sitting offices next door, so to say, um, okay. here in, in Biberach, and um, we work closely together coordinating the civil engineering program. Um, right. I hope that's okay for you, Fabiola. Yes, uh, okay, so we will move to the next part. So, uh, Dr. Nguyen Tan Tien, as yeah. you are uh, sharing previously, the construction engineering uh, industry in Vietnam has made a very big leap. So can you share with the, on audience and some breakthrough uh, in the construction made by Vietnamese enterprises? What makes the made in Vietnam uh, construction or infrastructure so authentic? The haze of the structure or the use of advanced technology in it? Yeah, please. Um, so today I would like to say you two projects uh, were built in Vietnam uh, several years ago. Uh, can you show us the two projects? Um, the, the first one is about the Landmass 81, could be in Ho Chi Minh City and the Century Pepsico uh, uh, building. Yeah, that's one. So um, there are two types, different different trials of construction about one is about the con uh, rainfall coverage structure and one is about the tilt construction. So it's made by and designed by the Vietnamese engineering mm -hmm. and, and conducted by Vietnamese. You, you know, the most Im important and the most difficult for this kind of structure is the size of the building. For example, the landmark 81 and the height is about uh, more than uh, 450 meters and uh, span for the sensory particle buildings about more than a hundred meters. Oh. So the, the, the important thing is how to make this kind of structure. That's quite challenging for the engineering, especially for Vietnamese engineering. So um, I think uh, 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 for the, the Lama 81, how to control the work quality, the concrete quality, for example, uh, how to uh, prevent the crack underneath of the structure. The foundation, the masses foundation, and control the temperature change during the pouring concrete uh, and cooling concrete, how to do that. Uh, we apply several techniques in order to, for example, using ice or pouring concrete at the mean eye to make sure that the temperature in the control. Or for the sensory bicycle um, building, we have a, a large span. So usually we will use space charge for this, but we use beam, the hay beam, we call, we call the, the, the thin wall beam hay beam. And we have a technique in order to make sure the both strength and the maintain the certain abilities of the structure. So both the structure uh, uh, now is working perfect right now. And I, I, I do believe that the engineer, Vietnamese engineer, now approaching to the level of international engineer or uh, Edward, yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, thank you for your sharing about the two typical uh, construction that were built by our Vietnamese enterprises. Uh, it's a proud to hear that uh, such uh, technical challenges be, uh, yeah, was concurred by our engineer, Vietnamese engineer. Uh, so, uh, Professor, uh, Dr. Uh, Pro, uh, Professor Alexander Clark, so can you give us uh, some example about a new technology, new trends, and new approach uh, in construction recently in the world or uh, in uh, Germany? Um, I mentioned I mentioned the trends um, before, so let's break it down now to um, an examples. Um, the digital models I talked about. Um, we are now in the stage of transforming these digital models out of the computer into um, the machinery to operate on site. Um, I remember when um, in my last project. Um, that was a huge infrastructure project um, in Vancouver, Canada, the Golden Years Bridge. We were still struggling with um, how to implement um, these digital data into machinery, operational machinery in earthworks construction um, to actually operate semi-automatically the machinery um, for the profiling. This has become absolute standard now in um, in Germany, and um, the the interfaces are working well. The um, <clears throat> the machinery has um, made huge progresses. So this is something that um, increases the productivity significantly out on a construction site. Um, the other trend that I mentioned is um, we need to reduce the carbon footprint um, of what we are doing, what we are designing, what we are constructing. And um, what we've seen is um, a turning backwards, I must say, to a very old construction material, wood and timber being used in construction. And um, this has been used many centuries ago widely, I get in Vietnam, in Europe, and it's got forgotten. Now, with the carbon discussions, it is um, getting very trendy again. Um, in the province of Baden-Württemberg, where our university is located, where Fabiola and I are now sitting, um, they have just changed um, one and a half years ago the building code um, to enable large size buildings in timber, in wood design, um, which was not possible. It was only allowed for smaller housing. So I see this um, being a huge trend. Um, Bibrach University, a colleague of mine, Jörg Schenslin, he, is, he did the design for a skyscraper building, 20 stores in timber construction. And I see these are um, two areas where we will see huge development, not only in Germany, but um, worldwide. Thank you, uh, Professor, Professor Alexander Glock, for your sharing. So you can see the evolution and the development of the construction engineering in Vietnam and even in the world. And uh, thank you for the interesting discussion about the construction industry in Vietnam. So let's add my back our uh, return to our Bachelor of Construction uh, civil engineering program. Uh, so dear Professor uh, Alexander Glock and Ms. Fabiola Schmidt, so would you kindly introduce the Biobarek University of Applied Sciences and the Faculty of Civil Engineering and Project Management to all the audiences today? I will, I will um, just try and share my screen um, because I think that um, makes things easier. Um, but while my screen is sharing, um, let me introduce um, Biberach University of Applied Science. So our focus is on not only to do the research-based science, but we also want to make sure that we have an application that um, we are going outside to the industry, outside to our clients. We want to make sure that our graduates have the employability. And um, this is the approach that was um, <coughs> carried out when the University of Biberach was founded 
um, 60 years ago as a pure civil engineering and architect school. And we've now gradually developed, we've got biotechnology and business um, administrations, such as other um, programs. But the core of our university, it's a small university, is the construction industry with architects, civil engineers, and project managers. Our faculty, civil engineering and project management, we are um, set up very internationally. This is now our second international program. Now it's a bachelor program with a Vietnamese German university together. We have a joint master program with a university in Argentina. That program um, has turned out to be the most successful German Argentine program um, so far in Germany and Argentina. And that's actually the goal we are following with this very new program um, of civil engineering together with VGU. I hope you can now see my shared screen. Um, <clears throat> what's our goal? Our goal is that the graduates of civil engineering will be able to plan, construct, calculate, build roads, bridges, tunnels. Our goal is to have a very broad and wide bachelor program, which enables our graduates to start in different areas of their career later on. We have a state of the heart, hard and soft skill, um, knowledge based on civil engineering. We work together with national and international corporations. And I mentioned the trend of digitalization. We have implemented the core digital building information modeling, BIM, um, into our curricula. It starts right at the beginning in the first year already. Um, you can see two pictures of a um, reinforcement model um, of a um, joint connection in high rise building and on the that's taken from the new Frankfurt airport, by the way. And the second is the formwork of a very aesthetically pleasing staircase. And um, <clears throat> the BCE program. Um, the ideal fit is for high school graduates with a strong interest in designing, in constructing the environment. That's where our focus lies on. We do lots of field trips and work in small groups together. Um, that's my colleague Martin Schubert here. So <clears throat> how is our program structured? We have three levels, but we start off with a foundation. We start off with a foundation year at VGU. After this foundation year, we have a two month internship. Two month internship to get knowledge to the industry. Um, we help the students find industry um, spots in companies so that they understand what is designing, what is construction industry about. With this, basic knowledge from the foundation year and the two month internship, they enter into the yellow level one. Here we have all basics from mathematics into technical mechanics, typical engineering subjects. And then we have the specialities for construction, building construction, um, geo-information systems, a very modern type using, of course, the satellite um, operated systems here, construction materials, earthworks, construction, geotechnical, and what my expertise is, construction management. This is what I'm lecturing um, last term, unfortunately, only um, online due to the COVID pandemic, but Next month in April, I'm planning to come to meet you as a lecture in presence. After the successful completion of level one, the students enter level two. Here we have the different areas of construction from structural engineering, how bridges, how high rise buildings 
are designed into water engineering, geotechnical engineering, and the different engineering subjects. And now we, after successful completion of level two, the students enter in level three, either in the specialization in structural engineering or in the specialization in infrastructure planning. So while in level two, they have been exposed to all subjects, we have two different specializations to meet the requirements, to meet the wishes of the students. And um, then in the middle, so to say, we have the electives. The completion of the study is the bachelor thesis um, integrated in the third year. And that bachelor thesis will be supervised by a uh, lecturer at HBC and a lecturer of VGU as a dualship, Vietnamese German dualship, so to say, and the graduate will graduate with a degree of the University of Applied Science in Biberach, international degree, fully accredited programs, um, also the very important European engineering accreditation, which you see right at the bottom right. Let me show you one example. This is just a recent example from a project study done by our students here, infrastructure, different modeling. Um, students had to organize this problem were various train um, accidents and what the, the students do, they came up with a design and fully modeled this design in our BIM laboratory. These laboratories are go going to be set up right in the new VGU campus, state-of-the-art laboratories, modeled a new type of road to access industry areas with very, you can see timber, timber concrete bridge design, a very carbon neutral design, including mechanically stabilized earth to reduce the um, concrete um, in the structure. And the final model, they use various different software solutions, integrated that in one BIM model, what I mentioned before, to create this BIM model, they had to use various different software solutions. Here you can see them from Autodesk Construction Cloud until Lumion, Lumion to visualize it. And um, please feel free to watch what our bachelor students did. Here you have the YouTube link and the QR code um, to do that. <clears throat> and with this, I would already want to stop with the introduction of our program, um, unless you have any further questions. Yeah, thank you a lot for your service. Uh, 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 very deep and clear sharing about the uh, uh, introduction of the Viberec University of Applied Sciences and Faculty of Civil Engineering and Project Management. So do you want to continue for the sharing, uh, Professor Klo? Fabiola Smith. Yeah. So, Ms. Uh, Fabiola Smith. Okay, uh, thank you for the sharing. Alexander Glock. So, uh, Dr. Ting, so what does the civil engineering uh, curriculum in which you focus on, and how can partner university contribute to the program? Yeah, yeah thank you uh, for uh, the question. Um, I would like to uh, briefly highlight some of the main points of the program. So, civil engineering at Vietnamese German Universities is a four years program. Uh, you have one year's information and Three, uh, last three years uh, for the main program. And, and uh, its programs offer about uh, 180 credits for whole uh, structure, and it divided by into two main major. Uh, first of all, uh, the, the structural engineering, and the uh, second one is in structure uh, planning. And the, the, the only difference is the last two years. So we will distinguish two programs at the, the end of the program. 
um, you know, after finishing the foundation years. So let me talk a little bit uh, information about foundation for civil engineering program. So you have uh, to study some basic courses uh, about math, about engineering, uh, scientific courses, about ITs or uh, English uh, or German as well. Um, and then at the end of the second semester, the student will be directly sent to the real construction, I mean the actual construction uh, project. So the student plays the role at the real engineer in the future. So they can be a uh, supervisor, can, can be the designer, just the, the steel uh, detailing, mat the rolling, something like that, in uh, a width in a row. And, and then send back to this uh, university. The, the, this, this will be a benefit to students so she or he can integrate from the theory to uh, the real structure and then back from the real structure to the theory. And this helps the student more understanding, more uh, problem solver, and then uh, he can get uh, like um, become the, the, the highly skilled engineer in the future. And uh, uh, for the civil engineering program, we get a, a lot of uh, support from the ministries as well as from the World Bank. So the civil engineer program at which you have uh, the, I, I, I can say the modern lab compared to another uh, university. And the, the, the most asked question I got from the, the audience, the parent, that's what is the difference? What is the difference and the, how to distinguish uh, from civil engineering at VGU compared to another program? So what is the main point? So I think the most advantages and the most important things for the civil engineering is we have a very, very good curriculum. I mean, from the, the contribution from the German partner, we have very um, uh, high quality. We have the uh, German professor, I mean, the lecturer from the Germany. We have the uh, very high quality curriculum and the lab. So the beam, for example, I can say the beam lab for uh, civil engineering and is the unit compared to another FCB. You can use, you, know, you may heard about the building information modeling. So this is one of the trend in the uh, construction in the future. And another thing is uh, uh, for those who don't want to go far from home, for example, go to Germany, but you can get the German qualities at the Vietnam. So that, that's in the more distinguished, I think. Um, uh, so far, that's the, uh, the all the information from Kirkland. If you want to know more in detail, you can uh, visit our website or directly contact me. I'm happy to, to hear from you and to, to see you. Yeah, thank you for your sharing, uh, Dr. Nguyen Tung Ti. So uh, Dr. Nguyen Tung Ti has uh, shared with us about a combi combination between the theory and a practical training and uh, some kind of, of the equipment of, of the civil engineering program in the Vietnamese German University. So uh, we would like to know more about the aspect of the practical training and uh, uh, lab uh, for the civil engineering. So uh, dear Professor uh, Alexander Glock, so how does the study program involve in uh, practical training and soft skill to prepare students for the best for the future? And uh, does the modern and the most modern and the latest construction technologies are integrated in teaching and study? Yes, <coughs> um, we we talked about the um, internship, the two month internship being a core part of the practical training so that the young students get to know the construction industry. This is a very intensive, important two month period before they start um, with the engineering subjects. What we found is that um, often young students or even um, the majority of people don't actually know the differences um, in construction industry. What the, are the jobs of an architect? 
what is the architect um, education focusing and what is the job and what is the civil engineering education focusing on. Let me, let me keep this maybe a little bit simple. Architects typically are the artists. They care about the look, the impression, the functions of a building, of um, but they do not actually care about the realization. This is job of the civil engineers. The civil engineer's job is to design and to construct what the architect had in mind. So to put it simply, the architect's vision, to put that into reality, that's our job as civil engineers. And <clears throat> a state of the art, at VGU, we have, as um, Dr. Chen mentioned, these new state-of-the-art laboratories um, in the new campus, which we are using. So the students will work side by side with researchers um, working on new materials. We will have field trips um, to construction sites, to design offices so that we always make sure that the theory and the application go hand in hand. We are the University of Applied Sciences, not of theoretical science. And um, that is throughout the entire program. I showed you the structure before. You will see that in each and every of the semesters. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you for your show. Uh, That's Alessandra uh, Glock. Uh, so we are uh, uh, make a question and a lot of people pay attention about the lab equipment for the civil yeah. uh, engineering. So uh, Dr. Ting, can you share uh, some labs and uh, typical equipment uh, of the civil engineering in Vietnamese German University, please? Uh, yeah. Um, for the civil engineering program at which you have many labs uh, using for uh, research, using for teaching purpose, and I can um, write here several uh, lab. For example, rainfall concrete lab, the geotechnical and soil mechanic lab, uh, computer lab, uh, structural lab, bitumen and flat and so on. So um, and uh, uh, the, the modern lab I want to mention here, right here, is CPM lab. You can see in in the uh, figure. The, there's the, the, the organization of BM lab, two screen, big screen, and then a uh, very high performance computer right there. And the rise of the picture is going to be uh, the 3D laser scanner. So one of the most advantageous devices used for uh, BM lab. So uh, as you might heard about the techniques uh, of the uh, for the building information modeling, we we, we say the scan to beam techniques. So scan to beam techniques is, is more advantageous in the design and, and management. For example, if you want to the innovate or design the buildings, the actual building at the realize. Uh, at the normal, you you will do by hand by the rulers something like that. The, the angle, but you cannot do for a bigger and bigger system. Uh, for example, you cannot measure the, the diameter of the pyre or uh, the size of the column, something like that. The height of the ceiling is take time. But for 3D laser scanner, it just do in the one second. So we, uh, after scanning, uh, we will get the, we say, the 3 point cloud, and then from 3D point cloud, we can exactly uh, build uh, the buildings uh, and convert from the reality to the computer model. And we can manage the science and, and do everything on the model. So I, I do believe that the 3D scanner uh, at which is used in the units device com uh, among the uh, the university in Vietnam, and that's why we put the building information modeling classes to be a mandatory courses for the program. So uh, combining from the theory to application is the the the, the, the most uh, advanced points of the program right now, offered by uh, VCU. 
um, let's say uh, uh, I want to ask the an, an main point uh, about uh, the, the program, the structural program. You know, we have about uh, two C matter. Uh, if you want to do the thesis, I wish you it's okay. But you have, uh, for the, the larger student, you have uh, opportunities to get the scholarship. We say the DA scholarship for uh, studying at term, Germany for the last one or two uh, semester. So um, if you want to, if you don't want to uh, change the environment or you want to visit in the new countries, it's okay for the foreign. Yeah, uh, thank you for your sharing, uh, Dr. Nguyen Tân Tien. So as you can see that in Vietnamese German University, the equipment for the uh, civil engineering, we have many modern and state-of-the-art uh, lab and equipment that rarely find in any construction company in Vietnam. So uh, see, you can, uh, a student can study and practice on that those equipment for your uh, career. So uh, to mention about the career, so. Uh, so could you please share about the career part of the civil engineering graduate and what are the qualifications of a successful civil engineering uh, engineer and what are the possible career path for the student? So uh, Professor Block, can you share about the qualification of a civil engineer and uh, the career path of a civil engineer? Thank you. Um, as we've seen, um, civil engineering is a very wide um, engineering discipline and therefore the career pathways um, that graduates take um, differ widely from each other. Um, so let me just um, focus on typical career pathways that we've seen um, at graduates. So what is a one major group of graduates, they um, continue, they start working as a project engineer in a design office, designing buildings, designing skyscrapers, um, bridges, tunnels from the structural point of view, the structural design engineers. Then we have the specialization in the planning, infrastructure planning. Um, typically, graduates from this specialization um, then work in design firms, engineering firms, in the infrastructure section, mobility concepts, um, setting up new um, water treatment plants, what are the um, feasibility studies um, for new roads, new bridges, um, or a subway system um, for a new mega city, things like that. Um, while these are the more design engineers, um, other civil engineers um, prefer to um, go into the realization of project, um, work as a project manager in making the digital model into reality, cast it in stone, in timber, in concrete, um, basically working in the construction industry, building the bridges, building the tunnels. Um, this is my background. I'm from bridge construction and um, I've always built infrastructure projects um, in Germany, UK, Canada and um, the USA. Um, so that's a very interesting part. Um, and um, then a third career path that um, we've seen is the governmental part. Um, each government, if it's the government of Vietnam, the government of Germany, Canada, need to plan their infrastructure need to rehabilitate the infrastructure. Where do we need a new bridge? Where do we need a new um, water or power plant? And um, therefore, a lot of civil engineers go into this sector working for the governmental authorities, um, starting up these projects and also approving these projects, um, the designs that they meet the um, law of the country. 
And then, of course, as a fourth career path, we have the academia, the research. After you've completed um, your bachelor's degree, you can continue your studies, continue your studies with a master degree in civil engineering at VGU or in Biberach at our university um, with a master program. We have various master programs, same as VGU has various master programs, which could be studied consecutive and then continue the career path with a PhD thesis and um, stay in the university in the research base. So that leads me to um, what um, Dr. Chen mentioned. Um, the cooperation, um, the exchange, we are more than happy to um, build up an exchange program that um, Vietnamese students from VGU students come to Germany as one semester, as two semesters, or even for their complete master studies. As a um, graduate of the Bachelor of Civil Engineering program, um, the graduate is eligible to take up a master program um, within the European Union in Biberach. Very, very welcome, but of course, other way too. We are a uh, um, engineering program, which is accredited by the um, European Engineering Association, which is very important for further studies in your master. So um, that that is um, a very nice career path too. So, and typically um, the direction where the young people um, will head to, this develops during their studies. It is rarely seldom that a young person knows from day one, I will want to become a design engineer in bridges. Typically, this develops during their studies, finding their way. My son is just studying civil engineering too, so he is still finding his way. Um, he won't become a structural engineer, he knows that. He wants to more go into the planning area, but which of that, that is still for Unsure. Thank you for your sharing, uh, Professor Glock, uh, about uh, a chance for a career path of a civil engineering and even the master uh, study after they graduate. We have a lot of chance to work and uh, study the master degree in Europe, in EU, and other developed country. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Ding, could you share and provide the information about the scholarship? Uh, yeah. What kind of scholarship that uh, the student will receive in VGU? Yeah. Um, for a civil engineering student, uh, they have potential to get the scholarship. So I would like to introduce uh, several scholarships that students may get. Uh, first of all, the, the marriage scholarship. They still will get if they have a good GPA, I mean the academic achievement during uh, studying at VGU. And they have a good English proficiency certificate, both uh, in English and German, and extra curricular um, activities. And uh, another uh, bigger scholarship, I would say, is the DAA scholarship. So there are two types of scholarship for DAA. We say uh, we call um, surplus uh, scholarship, and uh, that's is type one for studying in Vietnam. So uh, the scholarship will offer the living, the, the, the living allowance, the uh, tuition fees for one year in Vietnam. And the second, second one, the second choice is going to be the, <coughs> the AAD for studying abroad, I mean in Germany. So uh, the scholarship offer the, 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 the airplane tickets and the monthly allowance during the time that you uh, study in Germany, maybe at the, the, the last semester or the last sec, uh, two semesters. And uh, uh, the scholarship will be offered based on the student performance, for example, the GPA, the academic achievement, as I mentioned earlier, and this, uh, the English and German proficiency. 
and the extra curriculum may be as plus that is about social contribution activity so this is a big chance for you uh, to study both in Vietnam and both in Germany so I would say study civil engineering at VCU you will get more than an opportunity yeah well, uh, there are a lot of scholarship and opportunities uh, for the student uh, to get. Yeah, uh, we have provided a lot of scholarship and uh, DAD scholarship, which is available for you to study in the Bibrec University of Applied Sciences. Uh, yeah, in uh, your time study here. So, uh, Professor uh, as Alexander Glock will bring you a very uh, interesting video uh, from Bibrec University. But before that. So we have a small mini game that we have mm -hmm. a two backpack here to yeah. give to the student. So uh, Dr. Tien, can you give put on the question for the student and the two, uh, yeah, two audience with the corrected and the earliest uh, answer we get the gift here. So can you give uh, the uh, put on the question to the audiences to get a gift? Um, the, the question, and I just think about the question, and uh, you, you can you now uh, the partner universities of the civil engineering of VCU. Yeah, okay. I, I would I'd like to repeat the question. Can you name the partner university of uh, the civil engineering at VCU? So uh, the correct answer will be provided after the clip from Professor Glock here. So uh, Professor uh, Alexander Glock, can you show us the interesting clip that you have prepared for an audience here? Um, was prepared by guest students from um, various countries um, visiting Biberach University. This clip was prepared before COVID um, got hold of the world, but we are getting back to the old normal, I must say. Let me just share this. University is very small and your study groups are very small and that uh, you have a very close contact to your colleagues and to your professors. I like how there's only like one to two classes a week because in San Francisco or where I go to school we have class basically throughout the day. I like the teachers, my classmates, very friendly to me. I like the way they lock at the door when the class is over. That's so nice to the student and so nice to the teachers. Uh, possibilities to use a computer uh, room. You can print. You have a nice cafeteria here. It's a place where you can go and have lunch and breakfast. And it's really cheap. Welcome to Ivara. <laughs> All I can say about Ivara is it's really tiny and cute. It's a really nice place. It's, uh, in southern Germany, it's really nice too because it has a lot of history. You can see some uh, places from the medieval times, like they are frozen in time. It's I like that. Um, you can reach everything by bicycle. Um, I like the seasons, because there's no seasons in San Francisco. Um, I like the air, the environment. People here are very nice. I like the car. When I walk through the street, they will stop and wait for me. That's so nice. It's a good place to meet people and to um, make new friends. I love the marklats, I love the surroundings of the old part of the city. Twice a week you have the farmers going there, selling all their stuff, and it's, it's really nice, it's really cozy too, because you can be in touch with the 
with the real people from Germany. Shooting fest. Uh, we think it's a big party. All the people go out to the streets and and sing, sing, and sing. And... The program about international students is really great. They set you up with mentors that helped you out in the very first day, even before that. Like my mentor, she helped me out um, with finding a place, with how to, with getting here, and yeah, it's been it's been perfect so far. I like it a lot. It helps you kind of like get into the flow of things in Germany, and then you have an international family that you can like always run to when you need it. It's really nice to come here, and of course, if we talk about the university, uh, you will regret nothing because the installations are good and the people uh, is also good. How can you really be It's flight number five. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. Okay. Thank you for your answer. So, uh, from the doctor being uh, uh, sharing that you can see that okay, the English is also a challenge, but a very big opportunities for you uh, when you want to study civil engineering and you want to reach out the world class civil engineer. So uh, the next question, I think this is the final question too, uh, from an international student. Uh, he want to ask that whether we have a plan to open the master or PhD program of the civil engineering in PGU. Um, let me answer first. So <coughs> for the curriculum of civil engineering, we build in a systematic way, systematic manner. So from the step by step, from the bachelor to the master, we now are going to open the master program at VCU. So if you want to go further step in academic development, uh, for example, go to a uh, master program, you either um, study it in uh, VCU or go to the Bibrach, you know. It has no obstacle since you are grad graduate from the uh, Vietnamese German University. So it's uh, two options. You can study it in uh, Vietnam at VCU or you can go to the Germany to follow the academic uh, uh, step at Bibarak University, we are welcome all students from all over the world. Yeah, yeah thank you, uh, Dr. Nguyen Tân Tin, for your sharing. So I think this is the last question. Uh, yes, uh, thank you for, uh, yeah, thank you for the two, three guests, uh, Alex, uh, Professor Alexander Glock and uh, Ms. Uh, Fabiola Schmidt and Dr. Nguyen Tân Tin to join our program today. So uh, I hope that you uh, are a student who knows very insight about uh, civil engineering at VGU. And uh, for more information uh, about the program, could you please accept www.vgu.edu.vn or www.vgu.edu.vn for further information. Or please contact with us via hotline 0 9 And uh, thank you, uh, Professor Alexander Gok and Ms. Fabiola Schmidt. And thank you, uh, Dr. Nguyen Tin, to spare your valuable time to join with us today. Thank you, and see you again in the next uh, live stream. Yeah, thank you, everyone, and I'll see you again.